Um, I've had a very bit busy weekend trying to get the keyboard for the Enigma machine finished off. So I uh, spent most of yesterday machining up the little aluminium shafts, the key shafts. And today I've been working on the wiring. So unfortunately this is handheld so it might all get a bit wobbly. But uh, you can sort of see all the wiring in there for the micro switches uh, for all the keys. As you can see there's not a lot of room and one of the problems I think this machine is going to have is that the, uh, the keys, the cams, are actually going to rub on the wires. And there should be enough room there that the wires just move out of the way but eventually over time that would, that would cause problems. But given this machine isn't going to get a whole lot of, of use, it'll just be used for little demonstrations now and again, hopefully it won't be too big a problem. Um, the other problem I've got is how to assemble the bloody thing because you've got 26 sprung loaded keys obviously and they have to fit through the 26 little holes in the um, in the keyboard. Uh, there's also this other plate that they go through and the way I've got around that is if the each of the keys is sprung so you can see the little the little spring there if it'll focus on it maybe not um, and the key has to fit in like that uh, through the hole in the base plate now the spring of course wants to push the key up so you can see that's sprung loaded so what I what I needed to do was come up with a way of holding all the keys down so that I can actually m try and get the um, the top on I'm not even sure it's going to be possible. I'm going to see how that works. But the um, solution I came up with to keep all the keys down temporarily is basically this. So I um, one of the advantages of my, my other hobbies is old cars. So I've got lots of little bits of rubber hose and all sorts of bits and pieces lying around. So I managed to find a piece of, um, of this. It's probably... I don't think it's fuel hose. Uh, it's just standard sort of rubber hose and that's about the right diameter to fit over the the shafts. Um, I needed to fatten them up a little bit which is why there's little pieces of um, capped on tape on them. But basically what I did was um, cut these little rubber bushes, push the keys in and then these are like a push fit over the ends of the keys and that's what's holding them all down at the moment. So I'm hoping that's what will allow me to to be able to assemble it. So. I'll do this last key here um, and then see how it goes. So I managed to get it all together. Um, it was a bit fiddly but I got there in the end. So I have a keyboard. Unfortunately, um, have you ever had that situation where you assemble something really really complicated and then you get to the end and you look at the parts and you realize you've left something out or you've put something in wrong. Um, I did that with this. So with this keyboard um, there are little spaces that go up above the little cams. So in here there are um, spaces on the back two rows of keys. The spaces look a bit like that. These are the ones I've put in there. But I'd forgotten that I actually had reprinted those and made them a larger diameter. Um, and the reason for that is because I put a, um, a, um, a little step in this top piece to make it easier to assemble all the keys. And the problem is the diameter of this spacer was too small and it would start going up into that step. This spacer is actually meant to provide enough space to hold these, these keys in the right position. And because I've left those out, the keys are actually going too far up. And what that's causing is all the little feet to pop off because there's not enough um, of the, the shaft sticking through the bottom to allow me to stick these on properly. So if everything's set up correctly, the, um, the feet should just fit without... Um, there should be clearance between the bottom of the plate and the top of the foot like there is on this first row. And because I've put the wrong spaces in, I don't have that on the middle two rows. So what I'm going to have to do is take everything apart again and 
put the right spaces in and reassemble it, which means completely dismantling it. So I'll do that and I'll see how we go. Um, I'm also a bit worried that the, the keys, some of these are loose at the moment, um, when you press the keys, the wiring is getting in the way. You can sort of see here. So I'm not actually very happy with the way this is wired up. Um, there's just not enough clearance and I'm considering redesigning the whole thing um, and actually making it so that the wires come out the bottom here so that I can I can then run wires flat across the bottom. Um, this means I would have to redesign the um, the space piece. I'd have to redo all the wiring that I've just spent the whole weekend doing and I would have to reprint uh, this piece, which is the the sort of spacer, um, this goes sort of on the bottom here and against the base of the machine, and it's to stop the bottom of the keyboard flexing. So I would have to redesign this as well. Uh, that's not too hard. I, I would just need some little little um, cutouts in this so that there's space to run the wires. So. I'm probably going to stop now for the day. It's uh, getting quite late in the afternoon and I want to get this film up. So I think I need to stop and reconsider this whole thing. Um, saying that, the, the keys work very well. They, um, the action on them is very nice. Apart from getting caught on the wires every so often. So it's progress, but um, I don't think it's finished yet. Uh, even though the keyboard isn't quite right, and I think I'll definitely look at um, redesigning it, redesigning how the wiring's done so that the wiring isn't in the way of all the, the switches and the cams. Um, the first row is easy because I can get to the, the wires at the front here, so I can run the wires straight along the side here, out of the way, or else under the bottom. Uh, the middle two rows are what's going to be tricky, but... Um, Given that this is the first time I've actually had the entire keyboard assembled, uh, I thought I'd just try it out and see how the mechanism works. Now, I don't have the rotors in place because I'm um, one of the things I wanted to do is start wiring up the, the uh, entry wheel. So that normally goes on there. Uh, without that there, I can't put the, the, um, the rotor stack. I can't put this in place because there's nothing, nothing for that end of the axle to sit on. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is, uh, you can see here, this is the reflector. And I've got one of the pins in there, so I don't know how close I can get this to focus. Not very close. But uh, that's one of the springy, the springy pins in there. And you can sort of see on, that, uh, on the reflector how there are little pockets that the head of that can fit into. So of course the... Uh, the reflector goes on there, like that, and when you push the lever forwards, of course, this will this will come up against the the rotor stack, and the little springy pins will make contact. So, I've been uh, redesigning the the rotor as well, so that I can actually assemble that. Um, so the way it works now is this will all be assembled as one piece. And um, I can I can do all the wiring. That's also going to be a, a horrendous wiring job. I don't know how that's going to be if that's going to be very easy to do. Uh, but the idea is that this is all assembled as one piece, and then you place the ring on top. And I've got a uh, a cover that I've printed, which will fit over that, and that'll all fit down flush. And then of course, with all the copper contacts on that side, that's what makes contact with the, the reflector. But um, just with the, the keyboard in place, I just thought I'd see how that works. So, of course, normally you've got the, the cover for the lamp board, which goes in there. Like that. Clips in place. Um, and you would have the the top cover in place
I can get that. So the way that works is there's just some little tabs at the bottom there. But um, that gives a pretty good idea of what the, the entire machine's going to look like when it's finished. So obviously I want to build the wooden box for it. Um, I have some nice recycled oak I can use if I can um, get hold of a thicknesser, someone with a thicknesser to, to trim it down a bit for me. But uh, that's basically what the machine will look like. Put that back in. Um, so the keyboard, even though electrically it's a bit dodgy, uh, mechanically it's working very well. So you can see as you press the keys, they all um, slide very well. Uh, the other thing is when when these are all actually, the, the keycaps are actually, they're just pushed on at the moment. Uh, I'll probably glue them eventually, but because the shaft is a, is a tight fit in the cam and the cam can't rotate on the micro switch, um, the letters should stay upright. So hopefully they won't all, all turn around, but um, that's actually working pretty well. So apart from the wiring, it's, it's kind of coming along.